What is a woman that you forsake her? And the hearth fire and the home acre to go with the old grey widow maker. She has no house to lay a guest in, but one chill bed for us all to rest in, that the pale suns and the stray bergs nest in. She has no strong white arms to fold you, but the ten times fingering weed to hold you out on the rocks where the tide has rolled you. Yet, when the signs of summer thicken, and the ice breaks, and the birch buds quicken, yearly you turn from our side and sicken. Sicken again for the shouts and the slaughters, you steal away to the lapping waters, and look at your ship in her winter quarters. You forget our mirth and talk at the tables, the kine in the shed and the horse in the stables, to pitch her sides and go over her cables. Then you drive out where the storm clouds swallow and the sound of your oar blades falling hollow is all we have left through the months to follow. Ah, what is woman that you forsake her and the hearth fire and the home acre to go with the old grey widow maker. the virtual campfire hello hello lovely listeners around the world it's lovely to have you with us for another frith gas the four corners of the circular globe yeah i'm gonna have to go rethink some stuff <laughs> music i think we didn't we have the music already do, 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 do. are you gonna sing the music again okay you like singing this theme tune i just i want to make sure we get you know the thing in the that, i mean that's gonna sound really stupid yeah. If we have already done the music and I can't edit, dub that out with the music. <laughs> It'll be fine. You know? It's not like they haven't heard us singing before. This is very true. <laughs> okay, look. Ah. Much as, I'm enjoying our, now? much as I'm enjoying our geography podcast. Okay, fine. <laughs> Welcome around the virtual campfire. If you are shiny, brand new, and this is the very first time you've listened, this is not all about geography. Nope. We I'm do, we do Susan talk Martin. About stuff. I'm a UK ambassador for an organisation called TAC, which is the Asatru community. And uh, my name's Kate, and my claim to fame, because I'm not a heathen, my claim to fame is that I'm married to Suzanne, so that's basically it. Coffee Power Druid. I am. Ref- I, 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 yes, yes, Especially I do. Especially right now. Tend to adopt the label of Coffee Power Druid, uh, only mainly because I'm a druid and sort of. And I drink a lot of coffee. And I don't feel yeah. like I'm really, you know, I'm good, really... Good name. With it. If you know, I haven't had my coffee. You've definitely had it today. Yeah. Yeah. OK, let's get right on and have a bit of a heathen kind of themed chat. That's, yes, heathen podcast. That's a... Heathen podcast. Good Good with you? Cause, good you with know, me. Yeah. OK, cool. So, I thought we'd have a chat today about... A, uh, a goddess that we haven't really mentioned a lot about, but mm-hmm. I'd like to take it in a slightly different direction. Regular listeners will know that we totally stay on the point and we definitely do not go off sideways in any kind of shape, form or thingy. We're like a laser beam. Uh-huh. You just point us and press the button and we just stay right on it. I think we're probably like a laser beam in smoke, to be fair. Scattering about a bit. We scatter about all over the place and go, ooh, shiny. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Admittedly. So, what I'd like to try and do is... Laser in a hall of mirrors. Yeah, one of those. Glitter ball. Laser. <gasps> a disco ball! Uh-oh. I love disco balls. Carry on. <laughs> don't think I can. <laughs> so I thought we'd start with a goddess that we haven't talked a lot about. Now, we've mentioned her in passing mm -hmm. a little bit, but what I'd like to do is maybe put a different spin on things. Okay. Like we knew, we normally do, we bring something new into heathenism. This is, well, we like to try. Yeah. So I'd like to have a chat about Ran, the deep ocean goddess. Okay. So she's not the goddess of the shallow waters or the fishing or the, the nice kind of calm bits where everything's chilled. She's the goddess of the bits that are very deep. Right. And... She lives in a hall deep under the waves with Aegea, her husband, uh -huh. who is the master brewer. And if you remember a certain episode a little while ago where the trickster got his flighting on. Yes, yeah. That happens in Aegea and Rand's hall. Oh, right, okay. So it's kind of there. It's there. They're being host to the big party. Yeah. Everybody's round. The trickster, Loka, gets a little bit of his insult on. Yeah. And decides to have a good go at roasting all the guests. And pretty much does. That happens in Aegea and Rand's Hall. Which I imagine they're not too pleased about. <laughs> not hugely. It kind of sours things a wee spot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Ran is not related to Njord. No. He being... The god of more of things like fishing, the be the beaches the and the, waters, the, 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 the um... shorelines. For me, anyway, you might, lovely listeners, have a completely different understanding of Ran and Yord, and that's all good and groovy because we, we can't, can't tell, tell you how, how to heathen. To heathen. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> We're so... gonna have to do mugs or something with that on. <laughs> do you know what? That'd be awesome. We've got to do merch. <laughs> we'll have to do merch. Merch. Um, what do you like? So, yeah, so basically he's he's sort of... Um, he's like the Ran coastal, is Ran is the blue water, water god. Yeah, the, he's the, the kind of... the. For me, Njord is where the ocean meets the shoreline. Yeah. He's the tidal pools and the beaches. And he's the shallower waters. The fishing... Not necessarily the deep fishing, but the shallowing... Yeah. The the fishing where you're able to get food and seaweeds and crabs, mussels, prawns, all of that jazz. Rock pools! All rock pool thing going on. Yep. Ran is not the kind of cute critters in a rock pool. No. For me. Ran is the deeper waters. Ran is the unknown inky blackness where there are things and the only reason you see a light is because it's trying to get hold of you and the first thing you'll light. see <laughs> the first thing you'll see of a critter down there is its teeth. Yeah. Yeah. That to me is closer to Ran. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Where we would keep Poseidon. Yes. Or Neptune. Yeah. In the uh, sort of Olympian version of things. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. yeah. And okay. she's she is known for drowning sailors she right. would throw her net over a, a ship or a craft boat and she will take sailors overboard and she will drown them and bring them down to her hall okay so you know there is a contingent of the drowned dead for me that are in Rand's hall feasting and chilling out and yep. having a bit of a time down there she and now has... for some and now for some reason i've got house gray joy in my head Yes. <laughs> I'm, af kind I'm of. afraid so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see where that would be. It's that very uncompromising, not necessarily bleak, but to me she doesn't have human qualities of things like mercy. Okay. She, for me, in certain moods and tempers, she cannot be reasoned with. It's no. not. Well, it's I uncompromising. Mean, she's the sea. She is the and... sea. I I mean I take it that I I think I've always 
assumed and i'm i may be i may have assumed wrongly so you know anybody may feel free to correct me but i've always sort of made the assumption that there are parallels between your gods and mine in yeah. the sense that some of them represent the things that humans do to each other yes some of them represent the things that nature does to humans yes uh, yeah. and 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 vice versa and, and and so on so when i when you tell me about a sea god mm. i take certain I make you certain assumptions have about who... certain qualities in mind. Yeah, yeah. So you know, inconstancy and, as you say, mercilessness and, you know, abundance in some respects. Yes. You know, because they will they will bring, you know, great rewards in terms of foods and so on. But they are implacable. Yes, uncompromising. Yeah. You might say harsh, but I would say that's kind of putting a human quality onto someone that kind of doesn't have them. Yeah. Yes, she's capable of giving great wealth, but she's also capable of taking. And I think of all of the gods and goddesses, Ran is the one I have some connection to, but not a great connection to. Okay. I'm in Derbyshire. It's in the middle of the UK. It's about as far from the sea as I can get. In this country. Well. It's, so maybe that explains why I don't feel a strong connection to her where I am. On the other hand, um, yeah, I mean, it, it may it may, it may, may be why the connection is sort of attenuated. But, I mean, Britain has always been, you know, renowned as a... I, I don't like to do the history thing. You know, the, hark, the harking back to history. But we mm. are renowned as a maritime nation. You know, everything yes. about Britain has always been the sea. And the Vikings are renowned as a maritime people. For yeah. them, the sea wasn't a boundary, it wasn't a border, it was a motorway. Mm. And it was a way that they could get into Europe, into things like the end of the Silk Road, into everywhere that they could get, they got. Yeah. But by means of traversing oceans, great deep oceans that were capable of drowning them in a single wave. Yeah. And they made those crossings a hundred times, a thousand times. Mm. In certain places, in certain seasons, in certain tides, they knew that they could do that. Yeah. I guess where I wanted to go with this was run to me, if I look at the surface of the ocean, I can't tell what's underneath. Okay. I can only see, I can see the surface of it and it is vast. Mm. But I can't see what hides underneath that surface i can't see the depths of it the richness of life in it yeah the the dangers in it the rewards in it nothing i can just see a flat image in front of me mm. of the surface of that and it got me thinking about the parallels I, i'm going to go a little bit sideways here because okay. not that we don't ever go sideways we can do that but i'm going to go a little bit sideways here into uh modern psychology and say that understanding of looking at an ocean and not being able to see the depths of that ocean mm -hmm. put me in mind of Freud. Okay. And Sigmund looking, Freud. Sigmund Freud, the daddy. Uh, the da the da <laughs> of modern the, psychology. Uh, the, Thank you very the, much. The, tell me about your daddy. Tell me, the, tell me about your daddy, the daddy of modern psychology and now I've got an image of him in a wrestler's uniform and I really do not want to know what he'd do with that because it's not a good look for somebody with a moustache that does that. Um, it got me thinking about his theories and looking at a person, I can't see the depths in them. Mm. I don't know the riches in them. I, they are vast. As yeah. in one single individual... I can't see the dangers in them. I can't see the rewards in them. I can't see anything else by looking just at the surface. Mm. And it put me in mind of Freud's theory of personality. I think it's called where you have uh, the conscious brain, the subconscious brain and the unconscious. OK. So it's most commonly and traditionally um, shown as an iceberg so you have a little tiny bit of the iceberg above the water. Yeah. That is your conscious brain. Okay. These are the things you talk about and think about and do in your everyday lives. These are the things that you are aware of. Yeah. Underneath that, 
you have your subconscious brain just under the surface. Mm. These are things that you are aware of, but not constantly. Okay. So if I say to you lovely listeners around the virtual campfire, what was the colour of your first car? What was the colour of your first push bike? Where did your best mate live when you were at primary school? Yep. You'll probably be able to recall that information very, very quickly. You know, your first phone number, house phone, like landline phone number, your, the name of your primary school. Mm. You'll know those things, but you don't carry that information with you constantly in, 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 in your awareness. No. So you can recall it given a trigger <clears throat> phrase or a trigger meaning, and sometimes you get a trigger smell. Yes, I've had that. Or you get a song on the radio and you think, oh my gods, I was like X years old and I remember suddenly this memory is attached to this song and I'm suddenly back in that place. This is subconscious brain. But the rest of it is unconscious brain and you never get to the bottom of your unconscious brain. Okay. According to Freud, his whole understanding of psychology was to bring things from the unconscious into your conscious brain and process them and then put them back in again once you've sorted them all out into a nice wee set of organised boxes. Mm. And that is what reminds me of Ran. When I think about the deep ocean, I think about another human being. Okay. And how, just as I don't know what's beneath her surface, when I look at the ocean, when I hear the ocean, I have this image of the fact that I've gone and splashed around the shoreline and I've put my toes in the water and then gone, no, too cold, coming out. Yeah. And that's fine. But there's untold things that I'm missing out on mm. because I can't see them and I can't explore them and I can't go down to them. And I will never get to the bottom of that. There will always be more to discover. And I think for me, it's the same with people. I love, I just, my brain has immediately gone to the phrase no man is an island and yeah. I'm like well that's why then because we're all oceans instead <laughs> <laughs> yeah we are you know if you look at Freud in the same way you look at Ran mm. every other human being is a deep ocean yeah that you will never get to the bottom of but they are the rewards in exploring another human being and understanding how they work what makes them tick what's going on with them connecting to them connecting you know in ways that you might not have thought possible the very first time you met that person mm. and it's not until after that point that you find out you've got things in common yeah so i think for me ran is that's what ran reminds me of living so far from the oceans i don't get chance to go and sit by them yeah go and sit on the shoreline Go and learn about the beasties and critters that are way down in the depths. Go and learn about the food chains that happen at... Those really awesome little, like, spirally corkscrew things that light up. Gonna have to find those. Like anglerfish lighting up. Bioluminescent well, yeah, critters. The, you, get an, you get a lot of um, bioluminescence down there. Mm. Um, things with enormous teeth. Yeah, lots of teeth. Things that have evolved red... Is it red? Yeah. Or is it blue? Dumbo I can never remember which. I think it's red. I can never remember which end of the spectrum it is, but there's one end of the spectrum that nothing down there can see. Yeah, I think it's red. Mm. So, there's not a lot known about Rand that I know of, and I don't have as deep a connection with her as I would like, because I live so far from the sea. I can't visit her as much as I would want to. I can't go and see her I can't collect pebbles from the shoreline and bring them back for my altar space yeah I can make salt water in my kitchen but it's not the same no it's not <laughs> it's not the same but I can uh, draw images to her I can sing you know songs of praise I can listen to whale song yeah I can create ocean soundscapes to listen to in my home because I can't get out to see her. And to be fair, creating an ocean soundscape in my home is probably slightly easier than going out and trying to live record it. True enough. <laughs> Especially when it comes to like, you know, <clears throat> whales and clicky things. And... But this is, I mean, this is the advantage now, isn't it? It's, it's relatively straightforward to 
to at least be able to tune into that um, that sort of aesthetic, if you like. Mm. Um, I mean, there are all sorts of, you know, just apps and things that you can get that will feed Give you the you right kind of noises and, yeah. and, and, and images and things. For me, she's not a goddess I have a great open connection with. I would like to develop that further for myself. You know, maybe in the years to come I'll get to do that. Mm. But living in where we do makes it slightly tricky. You <laughs> say she there isn't a lot of ways I can go and see see her and offer no. to her shorelines. I mean, it's it's gonna again. I suppose it's 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 gonna make um, our uh, listen our continental listeners on whatever continent they might be crease. Uh, it's gonna make them chuckle <laughs> a bit. Yeah, you know. Um, I mean, somebody who lives in, in, in sort of the central USA or right slap bang in the middle of Russia or somewhere like that. Yeah. Um, and you're going to end up looking at us, us standing here on our tiny island going, I can't get to the sea. Can't get to the I sea. I just can't get to the sea. <laughs> it's like the sea like, absolutely everywhere. It's a couple of hours traveling in the shortest yeah. direction and I can't get... Just yeah. pick a direction and go in it and within two hours you'll fall in the water. <laughs> Falling in the water. <laughs> Oh, so, we so, should move to Orkney. Yeah, the, as far as I know, there's not a lot about Ran aside from the fact that she is a deep ocean goddess. Yeah, and she takes, she has been known to take sailors off boats, and she will cast her nets and drag them under. And drown so them. is she? Is she sort of? Is she sort of collecting up an army then? Um, because there's, I mean, obviously when um, Odin chooses people he's those, choosing very specific individuals those now. who have not yet been hoovered up by freya of course yes um <laughs> <laughs> but when he's picking people he's looking for people who will serve in the iron Hayar. yes he's looking for people who will serve a purpose when the time comes they will they will be uh not only have the natural aptitude but they'll have the mortal training and they'll have the, the skills, posthumous the training yeah uh to go out and fight Yes. Uh, a battle that he knows is futile, <laughs> but yes. he's going to fight it anyway. And I... Yep. Yeah, yeah. But is Ran collecting people for a purpose? Is she, or is she just sort of taking a toll in people who use the sea? I think it's, for me, my own personal understanding is that she is taking a toll. Mm. She's taking a payment. Okay. You go into the deep oceans, that's her territory. Yeah. That's her space. And she will let you know it. Yeah. So for me, if I go on a ferry and I'm going across deep waters at one end or the other, I will give offering to Ran. Yeah. <laughs> and to me, it kind of doesn't matter which end I do it at, so long as I do. Yeah. You might choose before you go on a, a cruise or you go out into the deep oceans, you know, more than a few miles away from a shore, mm. that you give. And you think about what's below you. Yeah. And how much life you're missing because you're sat right bobbing on the surface of it. You're <laughs> missing everything underneath, all of those depths, all of that richness you can't see. No. And it's probably not a good idea for you to try and see it. It's not a place for humans to be. It's not a place for humans to we, be. We sort of, I suppose in a way, it's like all these other environments that we... That we we find it's you know like the the deserts and the mountains and space and yeah. so on it's like you know humans can survive there but we have to acknowledge that we're out of our yeah you we know, have it, to go it, there commonly with specialist equipment yeah with specialist knowledge with specialist training mm. to just look at surviving in that environment yeah we have to take things with us to make sure that we do survive in that environment yeah. And I mean, I you know, I I speak as somebody who I have a I have a love of absolute love of the sea. Um, mm. It scares the it scares the daylights out of me sometimes. Mm. You know, I've never had uh, a huge amount of experience with the sea, mm. uh, short of going and standing on the beach and looking at it and going, "Isn't it lovely?" Yeah. Um, but I mean, good I've, for that part, I yeah. Can do that. But I, I do remember one one visit to the seaside once that uh, ended up on a, a very very rough day, and I remember. I finished up running back to the car along the, the, the sort of the pathway that ran along the beach, yeah. uh, along the seafront, 
with waves smashing themselves into the into, into the, the um, walls, into yeah. the walls. Mm. and by crikey it was scary yeah um so i mean i obviously i have to defer to anybody who's ever i mean i've been on ferries and things across the channel mm. you know so it's like um i've done a i've done a ferry across from uh, uh, Do- uh dover to dunkirk so you know mm. across the english channel mm. or the what do the french call it do they still call it the english channel Oh, yeah. If anybody happens to know, anybody anybody lives yeah, in France happens just... to know. I don't know. Whether, I don't know whether it is formally called the English Channel. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. The but channel the, the channel known between as English, yeah, the channel between Britain and France. Anyway, <laughs> okay. Um, and I've done um, a ferry up to the Scottish Islands. Mm. Um, you know, but again, these are these are comparatively shallow waters. I mean, yes. I certainly wouldn't want to try and. You know, I mean, they're, they're they're scarily deep when you're standing on the edge of the boat, looking the ship, yes. looking down. But um, the colour, oh, it's fabulous, yeah. But they are, you know, in terms of oceans, they're very, mm. very shallow. So I don't know whether they're even Rand's territory. I think I might play it safe and say, yeah, she's probably in there. I mean, somebody will be looking after them, and that yeah. somebody probably warrants due respect. But yeah. yes, yeah. But I can so... only imagine what it must be like for people who. Who actually make their living on ships, yes. <clears throat> you know, whether you know commercial ships carrying freight or military ships or or even help me those people who are fishing trawlers. Well, there was fishing trawlers. I was thinking the people who went and worked underneath. Yes. You know, um, yeah. I mean, there are people who who step on submarines. Yeah, willingly go, step on willing submarines. Ste- willingly step on submarines and go down there and stay down there for weeks, months at a time. Yeah that person's thinking about yeah yeah that's a little bit best. yeah I'm, i wouldn't be doing that yeah no I'm, I'm, i'll stay here i think it's it's quite nice warm <laughs> dry no doors it's fine no and you have to have doors on submarines you, well yes you have to have them quite thick i understand that's, you have yes. to be quite capable of blocking everything out on a submarine pretty much yeah so for me there's not a lot about ram hmm. not in the law that i know of Obviously, we'll scout around, we'll throw you some interesting links into the description on Podbean. Go and have a look at the show notes. Have a delve round for yourself. Uh-huh. You lovely listeners may have totally different experiences of round to the ones I have. Yeah. It's all good. Absolutely. It's, uh, you know, we each have our, our own sort of inspirations and... Yeah, connections. Connections, yeah. So, as far as I know, there wasn't a lot about it. There are some very, very small pieces of knowledge scattered through things like the mist cycle. The, the fact that Loki's flighting happens in the hall that she shares with Aegea. Yeah. And it's Aegea's mead that they're drinking at the party. Is it? Yeah. Or Aegea's brew that they're Is there any at left? The party. Don't know. <laughs> I have to ask him next time I talk to him. <laughs> <at least. laughs> I don't know, to be honest. Oh, and also you said, as far as I know... Mm. And it, although it's an everyday, very common phrase, it always still makes me think of Antonio Banderas. Okay. Because of as, and as far as I know, after four hundred years, I am the oldest living vampire in the world. Ooh. I know. <sighs> Sorry, I distracted us a little bit. That was the laser bouncing off the Hall of Mirrors and I'm going just, down the down the I'm corridor. Just scattered through the smoke yeah. there, and I'm just <laughs> completely lost focus. So, lovely listeners, we will leave you with that image of Ran. There is not much to go on as far as I know, but you lovely listeners may have different experiences. You may have had different connections with her, different understandings of her than the one I have. Yeah. Which is all good. You may work with the sea. You may work with the sea. It may be, it may be that she has... Um, she's... I was going to say spoken to you, you know. Yeah. She, she Communicated. You may connected. have actually heard from her, yeah. Yeah. I think for me in terms of things that I may want to put on my altar mm. for Ran, I may want to put a bowl of salt water. Okay. I may want to put a little bowl of sea salt. Yeah. And beach stones or seashells. And granted, these are things from the shoreline, which for me is about the safest place I want to go in yeah. regards to the deep oceans. <laughs> I mean, a rock is a rock. Um, and A rock is a rock, but if you've got beach glass... Yeah? Or you've got something like a uh, 
fossilised piece of coral or a sand dollar or a starfish. Yeah. They might be things that you might choose to put on an altar to represent her or to connect with her realms. What I was going to say was if uh, if she is deep waters mm. and you choose, you know, you choose a uh, an ocean, a seabed rock. Yeah. You know, you, you, you will have... Uh, when I say a rock is a rock, I mean, it's like rocks are about the only thing that you could pull up from that depth and not have them explode on you. <laughs> yeah, or try and bite your hand, or your try hand and bite off. Or try and bite your hand off probably and then explode. So good. And then explode. Yeah. You know, you can get... The beach is essentially full of rocks that have come from the ocean bed. Yeah. So things like tumble stones, beach glass, uh, seashells... Which she sells on the seashore. She does and I've never been able to do that one because I get all my words tangled up I think that's the point <laughs> things like that are the things that I might use on an altar to run Yeah. I might choose to put a blue altar cloth down mm -hmm. I might choose to put driftwood on there or build the altar top out of driftwood if it's a more permanent structure Yeah. it's very much all good, you might choose uh, to have a wooden bowl and have waves carved on the outside of it blues, for your offering bowl. Blues, greens and greys. Blues, greens and greys. I love a stormy sea. I would I would never, yeah. like I say, yeah, with due respect to said stormy sea, I wouldn't necessarily want to be out in it. But Me I love either. the I love the um I love the colours and I love the uh you know the sounds and yes. all that kind of stuff of a of a sea that's maybe not stormy but is is as got a bit of energy to Tempest it you know to it yeah 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 so for me things like that might be the things i might choose to put on an altar to run mm. or as a uh, a permanent little special shelf of items if you don't have an altar space that or uh, you don't you're not able to put up a permanent structure to run maybe even a temporary altar to block to run yeah you could put things on it like driftwood and coral structures or beach stones, something that gives you that connection that reminds you of where she is and what she is. Mm. So, lovely listeners, we're going to leave you sat around the virtual campfire, pondering the vastness and great depths of the ocean. Did you know that the sea is not actually far away from the virtual campfire? Is it not? No. Because wow. the, because the virtual campfire, it obviously in in this mystical clearing where we find ourselves, <laughs> with the fire going, yeah, we can move the logs it. that the, we can sit on. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a movable virtual campfire. You so see, we've moved it over there down that path. Yeah, only a little way, just around the cut. There's your long haul. Yeah, yeah, and I like the that. and the little yeah, yeah. lean-to that I have just like next to that, and then just down that path that way, that goes winding down. The, through the woods a little down the hill a little bit and there's the sea at the bottom there it's nice. like the beach quite like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah so you can, you can go and have a walk of, you know virtual campfire on the beach through an evening just watching the sunset i can go for that yeah you can go and have a have a have a walk along the virtual beach if you want to i will go and have a walk along the virtual beach <laughs> lovely listeners i'm going to roll my trousers up and take my shoes and socks off and go and walk <laughs> along the virtual beach because it's got to be done. Paddling! Got to do the little bit of the paddling and say hi to Ran at the same time. We're going to leave you now till next time. Maybe just ponder the depths of the oceans, of people. Mm -hmm. See where it takes you. See where the waves push and pull and give and take. Yeah. Because to me, the waves do that and life does that and there is a rhythm to things. There are patterns and there are circles and cycles. And all of that connects me back to the ocean and to Ran. So, little listeners, we're going to leave you sat around the virtual campfire, listening to the virtual sea on the virtual beach, which is <laughs> apparently just down that path over there. It's not too far away at all. If you would like to find us online and come and say hi... My name's Suzanne Martin. You can find me on Facebook and you can also find me on Twitter at Letha in Jeans. And should you want to find me for any reason, <clears throat> I'm also on 
Facebook and Twitter as Kate Coldwind, and I have a, a, a sort of a website thing uh, at glassrain.net, which uh, I'd be more than happy for you to uh, drop me a line on there. Yeah, come and say hi, come and drop us a friend request, come and talk to us about stuff. It's all good. All manner of stuff. All manner of stuff. Lovely listeners. We're going to leave you with a bit of a prayer to run. And we will talk to you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. The Pirate Queen. In the storybooks, riding her full-breasted ship, pistols cocked and ready to shoot. Coat scarlet and brass and plumed hat at a jaunty angle. The dark-eyed highwaywoman on the white horse, provoking screams from the stopped carriage. Hand over your jewels! And away she goes! into the adolescent girl's adventure novel. The robber maiden in the Snow Queen tickling her reindeer's chin with sharp knives, some day to steal some robber lad's heart and have him quailing under her even sharper tongue. And of course, la belle dame sans merci stealing that even more vaunted jewel, a young man's heart and veritable manhood. Row after row of ruthless women taking what they wanted and vanishing into the sunset. They have nothing on you, lady. Next to your cold, cold eyes, they all pale into all too human fantasy. Your sharp green glance is a stiletto, a slow turn of your head, a warning siren, your smile a razor knife opening with a click. Lady, I call you. And some would have read your name from that history, Rani. Yet others call you by the other meaning. Robber. Thief of ships. You see what you want. Bobbing about on the surface like a toy. And reach your delicate hand to take it. And that is all. Jewels. Guns. Bodies. Souls. Gold. How many rings lost from fingers waving in the surf? How many gold chains slipped soundlessly from swimming necks? You still take your toll. Your tax for our trespass on your waters, and count it fair. The sailors, too. Why? Your husband sees that they are fed, and when you tire of them, they go to hell to be fed further. What more to ask? Pirate queen of all the seas, Hair wound up in all the weeds, from tide pool to distant tide pool. Rand's truth is sharp, and her kingdom beautiful, and we can never resist it. No matter how hard we try.